Welcome to the Van Blam YouTube channel and welcome to another two minute test ride where I get just a little bit of seat time with a bike and have just a little bit to say about it. The Indian Chief Dark Horse is a no-frills American V-Twin Cruiser. If you're a follower of my channel, you'll know that I'm still in the early stages of my cruiser education. Oh, where are those pegs? What are they doing all the way up there? What I learned on this particular test ride is that not all cruisers are comfortable. On the Chief, reaching for the pegs and the bars simultaneously folds the rider in half like a taco and doesn't allow you to take any weight off of your butt. Combine that with minuscule suspension travel and even the slightest bump will kick you right in the tailbone. Ah, this is not a bike you'd want to spend all day on. For that, you'd want to look at one of the other, more touring-focused offerings in the Chief lineup. This version, the Dark Horse, is a stripped-back riding experience with little to distract you from the star of the show, the Thunderstroke 116 cubic inch V-twin motor. That's an upgrade from the Thunderstroke 111 found in the Standard Chief. While Indian motorcycles like to show off their heritage and their looks and branding, this motor is a thoroughly modern unit with chain-driven dual overhead cams. The power is not too shabby. Character-wise, I would say this motor is less interesting than a Milwaukee 8, but it sounds a hell of a lot better than the Revolution Max. It's clear that the Chief Dark Horse has no sporting aspirations. The best thing I can say about the handling is that by throwing the rider's knees high up into the air, the foot pegs get decent cornering clearance. This makes it fun in gentle sweepers. The Dark Horse gets ABS, cruise control, Bluetooth connectivity, a touchscreen, which I hate, and rear cylinder deactivation, which I love. As the name implies, that feature shuts off the rear cylinder at idle, helping to keep the bike cool and save gas. I think this bike is really good looking overall, although the semi-matte paint is a little uninspiring. Fit and finish is also a bit of a question mark. Did that just... Oh, <laughs> yes it did. Wow. I guess I could chalk that one up to this being a demo bike. Now is the part of the video where I talk about Harley Davidson. Look, there's just no getting around it. The Lowrider S costs the same as the Chief Dark Horse, and it's way better. The price is the same, the weight is the same, they're equally pretty in my opinion, the displacement is almost exactly the same, the torque and horsepower are virtually the same despite the Indian's Thunderstroke motor being more modern than the Harley's Milwaukee 8. But the Harley sounds better, it handles better, the dual disc brakes are in another league, the paint is much nicer, and it's got more personality, you know, it's got that Harleyness. It's pure rock and roll. That's something you'd normally expect to pay extra for, a lot extra, but against the Chief Dark Horse that isn't the case. Now, I'm not saying that all Harleys are better than all Indians. I'm sure there are still a few Indian models that may offer better performance or at least represent a better value than their Harley-Davidson equivalents, but the Chief Dark Horse ain't one of them. It's a fairly good bike, but unless you can find it for three grand off MSRP or you just really want something different from what your friends have, I cannot recommend it over the competition. Well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to do all the YouTube stuff like the subscribe and the comment, like and comment.